Where is the promise of his coming? This Monday, December 22nd, 2014. Good morning, everyone. They gather around. We're going to go to announcements in a moment, but I want to bring some encouragement to the bride today. That's what we hear from the unsaved who like to scoff at us believers that believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, the blessed hope. The unsaved of the world will scoff. <laughs> they will shout. Where's the promise of his coming? I don't see any Jesus breaking the sky. But sadly, the trend today is not just the unsaved who are scoffing. It is the born again, covered in the blood, saved by grace, believers who scoff at us and ask, where is the promise of his coming? I'm going to give you the promise today. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be on fire with the Holy Ghost today. I want you to hang on to that blessed hope because he's coming. And he is coming quickly. And his reward is with him. Let me take you to scripture very quickly. Knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Second Peter 3, 3. And we see this with the unsaved of the world that have not come to know Jesus and to accept that gift of salvation, that price that he paid on the cross for them. I can understand them scoffing and laughing. Where's the promise of his coming? But we've got born again believers that are right there with them as they scoff and mock us who believe in the blessed hope, believe that the word of God is true. And we know that we are not going to be here during the time of Jacob's trouble. We hold on to that promise of Yeshua that we will be spared from the time of trouble that will come upon the entire earth. We know where we are in the book of Revelation. We know that we were not meant for wrath. That the great tribulation is not for us. That the church is not mentioned anywhere in the book of Revelation, past Revelation 3. That it's not meant for us, it's meant for the Jewish people. But many born again believers today want to put us in that time of Jacob's trouble. They see what's going on in the world today with Christians in Iraq and around the world being persecuted and beheaded. Small children for not denouncing the name of Jesus Christ. And they believe we're already in tribulation. They're looking for things to come upon this world that will cause men's hearts to fail them for fear. They're wrapped up in fear of the things that will come upon this whole world. Something as a mountain burning on fire being cast into the sea and the sea turning to blood and I'm not talking about a red tide algae I'm talking about blood hideous creatures with a tail like a scorpion to sting them that's what the body of believers today are convincing the pre-tribulation rapture believers to follow they're following asteroids to hit the earth Mass, mass, mass extinction of this planet that they are going to be here when the heavens and the earth pass away, that they are going to be destroyed during the time of the great wrath of the Lamb. And that time is not for us. Stay tuned because I'm going to be, I'll be working on a video. I'm going to read a, a wonderful article. And I'm going to present this video sometime today. But I want to bring you encouragement. When we go to the book of Revelation and we hear about the 24 elders, I want to take you back to, to King David and his 24 orders of the priesthood. Following that, to Machilzadek, the line of priesthood that Jesus comes from and that we are grafted into. Great tribulation in the wrath period it's going to be a terrible time. There are going to be those that go through 
this great tribulation that if they do not take the mark of the beast, they will be beheaded. They will come to accept Jesus at this time. It's not for you. The 24 elders, who are they? Who are they, brothers and sisters, from the line of David and the order of the 24th priesthood to Melchizedek, to Jesus, to us? Who, who is it that cast their crowns before the throne? Let me give you some encouragement, then we're going to go to announcements. I don't want to give too much of my next video away. Uh, hopefully I can get it done. It's busy, busy time uh, of the year for me. Let me take you to... Um, let me read some scripture for you. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Don't allow this to happen. There are born-again believers that have given up or don't believe in the promise of his coming, the blessed hope. I also will keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. It's not for the bride. The elders of these elect are seen in the next chapter of Revelation, casting their crowns of gold before the throne of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, before the tribulation begins in Revelation 6. Here is your blessed hope. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I hear was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats. The order of the priesthood, the twenty-four order of the order of the priesthood, from David to Melchizedek, to Yeshua, to Jesus, to us, doesn't mean literally 24 uh, thrones. And upon the seats I saw four and 20 elders sitting. Doesn't mean there's just only 24 people there. It's the order of the priesthood of Jesus. Clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold. The four and 20 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne <coughs> saying thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created and I beheld and lo in the midst of the throne of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden wilds full of odours, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Listen to me now, amen, listen to me. Thou art worthy to take the book. And to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by, and has redeemed us, the twenty-four elders, not twenty-four, literally twenty-four people, but the order of the priesthood, and has redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred. Do you hear me, amen? And, and tongue, and people, and nation, and multitudes, and multitudes, and multitudes of these order of priesthood these elders are not 24 and has made us unto God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and a thousand thousand we are we are the 24 elders Stay tuned for my video I'm going to work on today. <coughs> Ministry announcements for closing in on Christmas. I'll be heading out to Detroit, Michigan tomorrow.
uh, and Christmas Eve. And I want to thank those that have given so much to this ministry. And there's so much more work to do. Charles Clark for December 19th, a gift of $75. And Pamela Ott, what a precious gift of $200. And precious brother David, David Blair, he was our guest uh, a while back on Tiny Chat, a $500 offering to our ministry. We'll be going to Detroit, Michigan tomorrow and Christmas Eve. There are many families in crisis and families in need that will don't have a place to lay their head on Christmas Day, let alone any food or, or anything. There is a tent city uh, just east of downtown Detroit, and I will be heading that way. If you feel led to give to this ministry, we have a anonymous viewer that will match between now and Christmas Eve the largest offering that comes in. They will match it if it's like uh, David's gift of $500. They will match it and that will be $1,000. There's still time. We need your help. We need your help. If you feel led to give to this ministry, please, we need your help. Be encouraged. The link will be below. Stay tuned. God bless.